What if you needed to sketch a tangent function, something really wild like this one? Well, let's deal with a, what a tangent function looks like first of all, and then we'll just sketch this one. It won't be too difficult. This is what our tangent function looks like. Now, a couple of things to note. See, it's always going uphill, okay? It's constantly increasing. Uh, it has a bunch of roots at 0, pi, 2, pi, 3, pi, and 4, pi. And it has asymptotes at pi and 2, 3, pi and 2, 5, pi and 2, 7, pi and 2, etc. You know about f of x equals 10x. It's always increasing. The roots are at pi n, so uh, 0, pi, 2, pi, 3, pi, 4, pi. And the asymptotes are at uh, 2n plus 1 over 2. Got to put a pi in there. 2 pi n plus 1 over 2. All right, so that's what we know about 10x. Now we can start sketching something way more complicated, just using what we know about function transformation. So what can we see about this uh, function? Well, this three here is going to stretch our function this way uh, by a factor of three. Now, what about this uh, two in here? It's gonna be stretching our function around the y-axis. Um, now that works in sort of the opposite way do you expect. So it's going to dilate it by a factor of a half around that y-axis. And then of course we have uh, this bit here, which is going to shift our function up. Uh, sorry, it's going to shift our function down by two. And then finally, it's going to uh, translate left by pi on four. So that moves the opposite of how you would expect it to. All right, so. Now that I've got all that information, what am I going to do with it? Well, dilate it away from the x-axis by a factor of 3. That doesn't really change the way uh, that my tan function can be sketched. You can see that I haven't labelled my y-axis with numbers here, and that's on purpose. That's going to stretch up, yeah, but it's not going to change the x-axis, uh, the x-intercepts. It's not going to change the asymptotes. All right, what about dilated towards the y-axis by a factor of a half? Okay, so that's going to really squash up my uh, function, right? Now, in this function, my roots appear every pi. So pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Uh, if it's squashed by a factor of a half, that means that my roots are going to occur twice as often. So at pi on 2, at pi, at 3 pi and 2, at 2 pi. Uh, and that means that my asymptotes are also going to occur twice as often at um, pi on 4, at uh, 3 pi on 4, at 5 pi on 4. Okay, so that's all well and good, but I'm not going to act on that information yet because uh, I'm also going to translate the function down by 2, which is going to change where the roots appear, and I'm going to translate left by pi on 4, which is also going to change where the roots all appear. But translating down by 2 and left by pi on 4 does give me at least one single point on this whole function because uh, the origin now moves, or that point, 0, 0, now moves down to negative 2 and left to pi on 4. So I can put it right here, and I'll call that point um, 2 and that negative pi on 4. Okay, and so then the function is going to go up like that. Now, what do I know about uh, my asymptotes? Right, uh, now originally asymptotes appear at pi on 2, but we said that this function has been um, squashed by a factor of a half, which means that the original uh, asymptote would have started at pi on 4, but then we shifted it left by pi on 4. So I'm actually going to have asymptote, my first asymptote is going to be at this y-axis, and I'm going to get asymptotes um, every pi on 2, uh, because generally I used to get asymptotes. Um, it used to be a distance of pi between asymptotes, but because this has been stretched out, it's now going to be asymptotes um, every pi on 2. And obviously that counts for negatives as well. All right, so I have some asymptotes. Um, now, it hasn't been flipped at all, so the general shape of it is going to be moving through here and then moving up there like that. 
The one point I really don't have is my root. And there's nothing for that except to try to solve this equation by letting y equal 0. 0 equals 310 to x minus pi and 4. There should be another bracket in there. Minus 2. And I start trying to solve it. I'll get 2 thirds 10 to bracket x minus pi on 4. Now, we don't have a nice, neat way to solve tan theta equals 2 on 3. We'd have to pull out our calculator for that. So, uh, in terms of sketching these tan functions, I'm not going to pull my calculator out to solve that. Uh, if I had my calculator, I'd just be sketching the thing anyway. So, I'm not going to find that root. All I know about this function is that it has asymptotes here, asymptotes here. That is was the origin and is now our new origin. We know that it's also going to pass through that point everywhere. So it's always going to pass through that point, that repeating point there. And then I can just draw in all of these tan shapes. Okay, a little bit unsatisfying, I suppose, but it's important to understand that when you're sketching a function, it's really just sketching a series of transformations. So as long as you understand what an original tan function looks like, you can then sketch any transformation of that tan function.